My name is Sam Vaknin. I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And on a Monday morning, what else is there to discuss but the price of oil? Let's start with a reality check. Brent crude prices are hovering around the $85 mark. China's economic woes combine to keep prices in check, despite the recent OPEC Plus production cuts. A stabilizing US dollar, soaring interest rates, tightening bank, bank credits, and sluggish manufacturing and trade should conspire to moderate price increases through 2024 despite drawdowns on global stocks. But I think the question is much less relevant than it has been in the 1970s for example. The price of oil is no longer an important determinant of the economic health of the West. To create the same amount of economic output, manufacturers use much less oil than they used to. Moreover, Today, there are futures contracts which allow one to fix the price of purchase oil well in advance. There are options contracts which can be used to limit, limit one's risk as a result of trading in such futures contra contracts. So if you put the two together, you can sort of fixate the futures pr future price of oil. So why is the price of oil on the ascendance? Because oil has become a form of investment and a hedge against rising inflation. People plow their savings into oil, and speculators drive the markets. As Saudi Arabia correctly observes, the price of oil is no longer determined merely by supply and demand. Who decides on the domestic price of oil and its derivative, derivatives? In some countries, <coughs> I'm sorry, oil does this to you. In some countries, prices are fixed entirely by market forces, supply and demand, usually through a spe specialized exchanges, for example, the Rotterdam exchange. The market is completely de deregulated. Exports and imports are totally allowed and totally free. In other countries, though, prices are fixed by a committee of representatives of the government, the oil industry, the biggest consumers of oil, and representatives of households and agricultural consumers. In most countries, prices are changed every three to six months based on the cost of oil at a certain port of delivery. Take Israel, for example. In Israel, the price of oil fluctuates every three months according to the price of oil delivered in certain Italian ports. Israel gets most of its oil delivered in Italy. And this is an automatic adjust adjustment. In a few countries, the prices are fixed by the competent ministry in accordance with the actual cost of the oil, importing, processing, distribution, plus a fixed percentage, usually 15%. This is called the cost plus basis pricing method. But the international price of oil is determined by the following factors. Number one, the weather, believe it or not. Cold weather increases consumption. The world is getting hotter. The 14 hottest years in history have been in the last 25 years. The warmer the climate, the less oil is consumed for heating, but the more oil is consumed for air conditioning. Number two, economic growth. The stronger economic growth is the more oil is consumed mostly for industrial purposes. The incredible economic development of countries like China and India and the emergence of car-owning middle classes in many developing countries enhanced demand and contributed to the current relatively high level of prices. Wars increase oil consumption by all parties involved. No need to elaborate. Number four. Oil exploration budgets are growing. New contracts have just been signed in the Gulf area, including Iraq, Brazil, the North Sea, Alaska, and Canada. The more exploration, the more reserves are discovered and exploited, thereby increasing the supply side of the oil equation. Lifting of sanctions in various countries like Iraq, Iran, Libya, Venezuela, 
these will increase the price of oil. Uh, the supply of oil, I'm sorry, <laughs> decrease the price, increase the supply. Oil reserves throughout the world are low, stocks are drawn down. This tends to enhance the demand for newly produced oil. When there is an economic crisis in certain oil producers, such as Russia, Nigeria, Venezuela, Iraq, it forces them to sell oil cheaply, sometimes in defiance of OPEC quotas or sanctions. This was the case in the late 1990s, and is the case right now with Russia. OPEC plus agreements to restrict or increase output and support price levels should be closely scrutinized. OPEC is not reliable. Its members are notorious for reneging of their obligations. Moreover, OPEC members represent less than half the oil produced globally. Their influence is limited. Ecological concerns and economic considerations lead to the development of alternative fuels and the enhanced consumption of LNG, liquid natu liquefied natural gas, and coal. And this is at oil's expense. Even nuclear energy is reviving, as does, of course, solar energy and wind energy. New oil exploration technology and productivity gains allow producers to turn a profit, even on cheaper oil. So they are not likely to refrain from extracting and selling oil, even if the, if the price of oil declines to $5 a barrel, which is extremely unlikely. Privatization and deregulation of oil industries, mainly in Latin America and much more hesitantly in the Gulf, these increase supply. Recent moves in countries like Venezuela, Russia, and Bolivia to renationalize the oil industries and unrest in countries like Nigeria, all these developments, geopolitical developments, raise global oil prices owing to uncertainty and increased political risk. And finally, price volatility induced by hedge funds and other derivatives has increased lately. But as opposed to common opinion, financial players have no preference which way the price goes, so they are neutral. 